Hello everyone, this is Shannon for Waffle Flower Crafts. In today's video, we're going to create a really fun birthday card using the Oyez stamp set. We're going to start today's project with the Oyez stamp set. So this is the images. It's all kind of London themed, really cute. I pulled out just three images from the set. One of them is Big Ben, one's a double decker bus, and one is one of the town crier guys, the guy that says Oyez, Oyez. So I actually didn't know what that was until the set came out and then I looked it up and I was like, oh, okay, that's what it is. So I just stamped the images in 100 on 110 pound white cardstock in Momento Tuxedo Black. Now I'm taking a Sharpie and just adding a couple details. I wanted to split his feather up into two and then add a third feather. Just because the images online, they had the town crier have like three feathers. And I'm also just going to add a stripe here on the double decker bus. None of these things are necessary, but for some reason I felt like I needed to do them. So I just added those little bits of details. Just be note that if you're going to add that third feather onto the town crier, the matching die won't cut him out. So I actually end up fussy cutting him so definitely think about if whether you think you need to do three feathers like I did so I'm now just Copic coloring these images the colors I'm using are on screen so you can follow along my basic method for Copic coloring is I start with my lightest and I color the whole area then I move to my medium shade and color almost uh, a little bit past half like since I'm using three colors I'll color about two-thirds with my medium shade and then a third with my darkest shade and then I blend out using the medium shade and then then I'll move to the lightest shade again so that's basically the mythology that I follow every time I Copic color now I'm moving on to kind of my black so again I'm starting with my lightest color which is happens which is going to be a gray because this is black then moving to my medium shade and then to my darkest shade and that is black right now and now that I'm done with the black I'll move back to my medium I'm just blending with this medium shade but that transition between the dark to the medium and then my light I'll blend where the medium meets the light so just blending those transitions to make them nice and smooth so now I'm moving on to my cream colors these three these three cream colors I'm using them for Big Ben the scroll and that stripe that I created on the double decker bus and because these areas are pretty small and the colors are pretty light I really don't end up doing too much blending I basically just use my darkest on some of the lines on Big Ben just to add a little shadow now I'm moving on to my blue so I'm coloring one of the feathers blue on his hat and just that little section on the double decker bus I kind of thought of that as like an advertising area on the double decker bus and now I will finish up with some gold here for the bell there's like some buckles on his shoes and just some of the details in the jacket and the hat on make gold as well and we are almost done I'm just coloring his skin I did notice that I missed his sleeve there so I'm going back over with my reds to make sure I get that little section of his sleeve and then for my whites I actually just use a uh, blue and then I will blend it out with my colorless blender and that's what my solution for whites is just kind of add a shadow and that shadow is blue so I went ahead and die cut the images out with the matching die and remember I can't cut out or I couldn't use the matching die with this guy because I added that little red feather so I am fussy cutting this out by hand I am making sure to leave that white border that so it looks just like the die cut images and now that I'm all done with my coloring my images and cutting them out I'm now going to move on to creating my background so I have an A2 panel here of 110 pound white cardstock and I'm going to blend just this bottom quarter with some distress oxides I'm starting with antique linen and then I'll move on to tea dye I'm just using my little um, mini ink blending tool here really quickly blending this these distress oxides just blend really easily and I'm getting a nice soft transition here between the tea dye to the antique linen now I'm going to blend this upper half with two blues so I'm basically creating a ground and a sky my first blue is actually distress ink it is a blueprint sketch I don't own the oxide in this color so I'm using the inks but if you haven't owned the oxides you could definitely use that I love these two colors together so my next color is chip sapphire I just think blueprint sketch and chip sapphire really create a beautiful kind of night sky so I am blending um, just a little gradation here at the upper half now I'm going to take some Gonzai Tombi white paint mix it with some water then load the brush up with the paint and then tap the loaded brush on my finger and that creates these little splatters that will resemble stars 
While my stars are drying, I'm going to work on my shrubs. These were cut using waffle flowers, scenery dye, and some green cardstock. And now I'm just ink blending some green on here just to add a little bit of gradation, make a little bit more interest. I've started with mowed lawn, started and started ink blending at the bottom of the shrubs. And then I'm moving on to my darker shade, which is pine needles. And then again, these are both distress inks. You could definitely use oxides if you prefer. I just don't have these colors in um, oxides. And I put the two together, the two layers, just to see. I like that back layer to be a little bit darker, so I just ink blended a little bit more with my two colors on that back shrubbery. Now I'm going to create a frame. I have the fourth and fifth largest die from the A2 layers die set, and I am going to place them down on some white cardstock, one inside of the other, making sure the gap between the two is even on all sides of these two rectangles and then use some micro pore tape to hold that die those two dies in place and then run it through my die cutting machine and that just creates a beautiful little frame that's going to kind of narrow my card space so I don't have to have so many images to fill up the card front so now I'm moving on to my sentiment. The sentiment is from the Oya's stamp set again. I'm going to stamp it onto some vellum, but I am actually going to heat emboss this, so I did apply some anti-static powder first, then stamp the sentiment in Versamark ink, and now I am dipping that stamp sentiment into some white embossing powder, and then heat setting it with my heat tool. So I went ahead and die cut the sentiment out with a die from the Speech Bubbles die set. This is a really handy set. Just die cut that out really quick and once that was die cut I have all the components I need to assemble my card. The first thing I'm going to do is add some liquid glue to the front of an A2 top folding card base and then adhere my panel. The reason why I like to use liquid glue is it allows me to kind of quickly adjust before the glue sets and gives me a little bit of wiggle room to make sure that panel is perfectly straight. I'm now going to use the liquid glue to adhere these two shrubbery layers. I'm going to start actually with the first layer and just stick it right in that center area where there is no ink blending and then kind of lift it up real quick before the glue has a chance to set to tuck in that back layer of shrubbery. Now I'm going to grab Big Ben here, again apply some liquid glue to the back side of him and tuck him behind that first layer of shrubbery. That just gives the illusion that it's really far in the back which is appropriate for kind of the scale of Big Ben. And now I'm going to add some glue to the back side of my frame and just center that and place that right down on the card front. I went ahead and kind of arranged the rest of my images and now I'm just going to glue them down starting with that double decker bus. And then I also die cut some craft foam for the town crier. This will just make that town crier have a little dimension. Yes, the craft foam is not completely covering the town crier because of that additional feather that I added, but for the most part he's covered with that craft foam and he and has that support and no one will really notice that little part of his feather that doesn't have it. Now for the sentiment, because it's vellum I have to be careful where I place glue so I'm just putting small amounts of glue on the back side of the sentiment so wherever that embossing is and that will just hide the glue but give just enough of it for the sentiment to stick down. And now my card is done. I'll hold it to the camera so you can get a good look at all the details. Love the layers of the shrubbery, and I love these images from the Oya's stamp set. This is just a really fun and unique card. My husband and I went to London, and we just loved it. We are saving our pennies so we can go back again someday. I hope you guys enjoyed today's card and video. If you want any more information on the products I use, please visit Waffle Flower, and you can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook for more creative ideas. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.